Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers this morning is Tunde Kolawale. He's on the phone. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, my sister. Thanks for having me. Good Thank morning. You. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. All right, so we'll be starting with the Daily Trust this morning. And the Daily Trust leads with bread beyond reach. Citizens lament. Um, the writers here says bakeries shut down due to rising cost of production. Nigerians seek relatively cheaper foods. Government must act now. Bakers, master bakers, they say. But when we move over to the nation and the punch, it talks about federal government kicks off food um, security emergency plan. And then on the punch, it says federal government projects massive food price crash in January and says new means will address high food costs, says agriculture minister. Imported food commodities will be subjected to recommended retail price. And that's been said by the federal government. So on one hand, um, there are people who are lamenting. There are people who are going home hungry. Even though the agricultural minister said the goal is to ensure that no Nigerian will go home hungry. Do you think the initiatives that they are rolling out right now, do you think is something to look forward to? And truly, in 180 days, we might see the, um, the crash of food prices. When, uh, ordinary men, when the government talks with people, it's um, incumbent on the people mm. to believe their government. But can we still say there is no cross deficit between the Nigerian people and the different government that they have had over time? My answer is yes. Nobody seems to trust anybody in government anymore in Nigeria. Simply because many covenants, many programs, many proposals, many promises are made in the past. All of which I came to know. You know? The, when Jonathan was there, and the petroleum subsidy was removed, the promise was they have thousands of electric cars at the port to be cleared and deployed for the use of the people within the cities and the city commuters. Several years after that government left power, have you seen any of our vehicles? We were also recently told that the protocol refinery will be functioning by the end of uh, June, we are in July now, 11 or there about, that refinery is not sustained. In fact, they are asking a general situation to survive patients. This was the refinery in which they have said they were already doing the test run. So, if what the means of agriculture is saying is going to be believed, then we will need more practical action than rhetoric and promises. Because, like I said, most of the proposals that they are even making out in the area of agriculture, they are not new. Those are programs and projects that have been there in one department of government or the other. But let's give them the benefit of how. Let's see how it pans out. Mm. Okay, um, before we leave the, the Guardian newspaper, um, or the Daily Trust newspaper rather, uh, we have this, uh, for me, a disturbing um, uh, headline, Tinubu has been fenced off by forces, as according to Aline Dume. Uh, we heard this in the previous administration, how a cabal was ruling instead of the, uh, the president. Now it has started again. It has been fenced off by forces. Who are these forces? We don't even know. Uh, I'd like you to comment on that. That's what one of the senators is saying, that the president has been fenced off by forces. Even some ministers cannot access him before you talk of the uh, assembly members and all that. So a, a cabal, because that's another word for it, is now in charge. <laughs> Honestly speaking, let's be honest with ourselves. There has never been any government anywhere in the world 
there is no one form of cabal of the other, except in a democracy. And the reason why we have always had this cabal is because certain persons used to finance the elections, the, the electionary campaign of the politicians. And they don't do this just for doing it sick. At the end of the day, they want influence. They want power. They want their own business. Who they will get their existing air in government. And of course, if profit is to be taken, they will also want to make profit. Just like the Russians. I mean, like present day Russia. We have the oligarchy in Russia. Or is it the oligarch? They call them. I mean, a paper, I mean, a journal. Yesterday, and that journal, the Russian oligarch. I smile to the bank. They have made more than 18, is it billion or is it billion dollars from the war in Ukraine? But they are not likely to want that all to come to an end very shortly. Of course, too, when Bogari was there, he had his own cover. When Jonathan was there, he had his own cover. Our pair will be that the cabal in Nigeria to operate from the line of enlightening their interest. Enlightening interest, I said. If they are not operating in a very selfish manner, if they are not operating solely for the purpose of misleading the president for their own selfish ends, if their role is merely advisory, then we could condone it. And of course, if they transgress, the law is always there to take care of such things. But in fairness, the president you have in power today is not somebody who really can push around. He knows his own. He's worked in a country, a country. He's worked in the petroleum sector. He's been a senator. He's been the governor, and then now he's I mean, our president. So, given this background, I think he should be able to handle whatever cabal may be in place. Mm. Hmm. All right, let's move over to the Guardian. So, the Guardian leads with abuse, violation of urban planning laws, breed homelessness, slums. There's some data here. Um, one says at urban growth rate of 4.3% yearly, Kanu, Ibadan, Lagos, Port Harcourt, Abuja, Kaduna, Onicha, and Benin City, am among others, are projected to become bigger till 2030. Another says Enugu, Anambra, Lagos, Abuja, and Kanu have witnessed property demolitions worth over 100 billion naira in the last one and a half years. And finally, Nigeria witnessed about 604 building collapses between 1974 and May 30, 2024. Building Collapse Prevention Guild data. What do you think about all of this? You know, urban planning, the violation of urban planning, abuse, and these laws breed. Because there's so many people, I think a few months ago, they discovered somewhere just close to the Third Mainland Bridge where people have started building shanties. And you go to a lot of places, what? people are homeless, they don't have where to live. So people are probably under the bridge. But now this data says it's probably the abuse and violation of urban planning that is breeding this homelessness. What do you think? I'd like to get your comment, please. Well, there is no doubt about it. That homelessness is becoming a part and parcel mm. of the daily life of the average people. And the reason is not far fetched. So, and pilot today, in the hundreds of thousands of the Naira. And given the weight situation in Nigeria, the average Nigerian worker get that kind of amount of money. Furthermore, the financial institutions, who should ordinarily be giving budgets and loans to people 
for build houses, they are not forthcoming, they are not ready to do it. They are not ready to do it at all. They are looking for quick profit. They, just, uh, they are more interested in giving loans to politicians and also to traders who will buy goods and services. Yeah? And then uh, they turn their money and then they make huge profit. So if this is the situation, it will be difficult for us to really have uh, thousands uh, being, being built in the different parts of Nigeria, the way and manner the other base will be built. Because you need millions of homes being built on a daily basis, giving our huge population 200 million, and by 2050, the family will have nearly doubled. So, that's how you find people. We go to Shodi there. So many people are living under the bridges. Mm -hmm. You go to Lagos Island, people are living under the bridges. You go to Agege, the bridges that are, that are just constructed in Agege, people now live under them. So, if we're going to be able to eradicate some of these things, the family will have to go to the Alaji Takandera, in which is government. For just building a street without uh, worrying too much about that and selling it very cheaply to the average Nigerian public. Incidentally, most of those houses that are described as being really of standards, they are still stuck and serving the people. Some of those are, uh, apartments were bought for 2,500. Some people 1,500 uh, naira, some 5,000, some 10,000, like two places. You can't come by that uh, anymore. The homes that the government are building now is not for the ordinary person. Now, the gas building collapse, I think they also took place into what has been said. The cost of that has been going on. And because of that, those 15 months ago, they maximize this material. Where they should use 10 mm to support their pillar. They use 3 mm. They use 6 mm. When they mix the cement, it is not properly mixed. It's not in the aggregate that it should be mixed. And of course, too, when you see the decking that has been done some of these homes today, you standing on them, you will be praying that it doesn't collapse under your feet before you get down from them. And also look at the block that are used to build most of these houses. They are softer than loaf of bread. The loaf of bread that we eat in our homes now is stronger than most of these blocks that they now use to build home. So, if we are going to reduce incidences of building collapse, the supervisory authorities must be strict on standards. They must insist that if we should use the right uh, strength or textile of the block, the right iron rod, the right mixture of cement and sand and what have you, and granite, and all manners of structural things that ought to be put in place. So some of these things we also boil down to supervision of the regulatory authority. If they are able to stand their ground and insist that the right things be done, I am sure incidences of a building collapse will be reduced, but it cannot be totally eliminated. Even in advanced countries of the world, like China, like America, like Britain, like Germany, like France, you will see collapse in those places. Uh, since we are running out of time, let's just uh, take this uh, uh, headline. We're well, going back to a newspaper we have left uh, so that you can comment as a legal practitioner yourself. Uh, conflicting court orders, CJN vows to deal with errant judges. The CJN said that there's been a mechanism that has been uh, set uh, so that people, judges who uh, give conflicting judgments will be made to face the wrath of the law themselves. 
uh, I'm just asking, I'm just worried. Were, were, was there no mechanism before now uh, that judges were just doing whatever they were doing, you know, giving conflicting judgments here and there, and it's just being set now? Because if, if that's the case, it's very worrisome that we have operated a judicial system without uh, any uh, mechanism that will rein in the, the excesses of some judges. No. Uh, we have to be careful in so many respects. That story is in the see, Daily Trust, by the way. When people yeah. go to court and file their protest, it is those things that are, so to say, filtered with their own side of the case that they put before the court. And it is what before the court that the court will have to apply more and pronounce on this. They can't go outside the paper that's presented before them. And there are but they can decline some cases because they don't have the jurisdiction. They don't have the, the standing to, to entertain the cases. That's what we have seen in some of these things. And they're saying a case should be in the high court, uh, AY, a ABC, and then they're taking to another court, and the court is entertaining it. Yeah, I agree with you. There are one or two things that will not be fighting. But generally speaking, from my experience at the bar now for almost two decades, our judges, most of them, are geared and least disposed to doing justice. Don't discontinue the activity of the average Nigerian lawyer too. Most of us want to win our cases at all costs. And so the full fact, the whole thing, will not be made available to the judge who is to administer justice. So and then when they fail in one area, they hop to another court. There is no system in place to enable a judge know what has happened in court A in River State and what has happened in court B in Abuja when the case is brought before him. It's only the paper that is five processes that is before him. That uh, is going to act upon. I'm not too sure. Notwithstanding there might be some uh, few uh, laughs there and there. I say this because people the judges know that their reputation is at stake. But if they begin to give uh, judges that cannot with judgments that cannot with some scrutiny, then uh, it destroys their reputation. So they try to uh, run away from searching. I remember all the time we have been saying this, there are very few judges that uh, have been disciplined, very, very few of them that have been disciplined for not living up to expectations in the way and manner they have handled or many certain cases. Mm. All right, so let's look at the punch. Um, there is a story here still on legal matters. It says local government funds, Supreme Court decides federal government suits against governors today. On The Guardian, it says Supreme Court delivers judgment on local government autonomy today. Now, as a legal practitioner, what do you think about this? Because this has been in court for a bit, whereby the state governors are still the one um, you know, ruling the affairs of the states. They're still the ones who take these funds and then they disperse it however they please. Um, with this court judgment, the Supreme Court judgment that is going to be delivered today, what do you expect to see in that judgment? Well, uh, the people in the Supreme Court are experiencing uh, years and years of uh, administrative justice. So they become masters of the game. Mm. What I expect is that, uh, based on the processes that have been passed, that justice will be done in the case. But I must say, that I have my worries. Those who took these cases to court or this case to court are, them, are themselves 
not allow local government to operate freely in their own domain. In fact, most of the challenges that the local governments are facing today began from the domain of those who are taking this court, uh, this case to court. When elections, local government elections are conducted under them, it is the ruling party in the state that clears all the seats, leaving nothing for the opposition party. The same opposition party that won, uh, yes, yeah? the same local government that won seats in the General Assembly, at the Senate and the federal level, they will not go into the local government election and win nothing. They say it's a Bakodaya. Furthermore, they are the ones who pull the resources of the local government together and then begin to give them handouts for them to manage their, their local government. Furthermore, I'm not too sure that that case is a necessity. I don't think it's totally necessary. Is COVID disguised uh, merely an abuse of uh, the court process or lack of political will on the part of uh, the government at the federal level? Why do I say this? When you look at the Constitution, when you look at the uh, laws of the land and all that, there is no ambiguity as regards the power that has been conferred on the local government to run their affairs without being dictated to by the local government, by the state government in the respective parts of, of the country. Yes, there could be one or two things common to all the local governments which they have to jointly learn. And that is why the local government under the state. But what we see Presently, it's a situation in which no governor in Nigeria wants to allow the local government to function on fetters, which is a uh, target. And I say it's a target because um, you find out that the local government, people have more responsibility than the state, than the state government. The markets are under them. Some Cottage of cities are under them. The motor parks are under them. The street lights are under them. The energies are under them. Some schools are under them. And so many other, the old people's homes are under them. And so many other areas in which they hold the sole jurisdiction mm. to manage those places. But most times the governor want to embark on very grandiose projects. They want to establish or make or construct signature projects. They want to apply open in certain places right. to immortalize their names. And because of that, they divert the funds of the local government to such things. Forgetting that there are more roads under the local government. Yeah. More cities. And I think the local government is the bulwark of security. They are the ones that are supposed to come to the streets, insurgency, cattle, food and industry, mm. kidnapping, mm -hmm. and what happens. The state government and the federal government is made here to complement them. But because we destroy the local government, we are reaping the consequences of insecurity all over the country today. Our plans have been left wide open by the destruction of the local government. And something has to be done. All right. Whatever sir. judgment the Supreme Court comes out with, mm -hmm. if there is no political will to do the needful, mm. we will still not see light out of the, I mean, there will still not be light mm. at the end of the tunnel. All right. There are two things you said. One is um, the local government is to complement which is totally correct. And the second is the political will. We just hope that even when this judgment is being passed, you know, all of our politicians have that will to be able to adhere to it. Tunde Kolawale, we want to say thank you for coming. It was lovely reviewing the papers with you this morning. Thank you so much.
I wish both of you a lovely day. You, you too. too, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we've been speaking with Tunde Kolawale, he's a public affairs analyst, and we've just been taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>